the fourth lecture of the Jinmin Lecture. Uh, it's my uh, uh, pleasure to welcome you all to this uh, grand finale, the fourth lecture. And uh, today's speaker is uh, uh, Professor Rahim Morabi, from New Zealand, International University. Professor Jinmin will try to explain a few words. Well, the <coughs> first of all, I would like to thank enormously uh, the Chinese. The point is uh, uh, that the black holes uh, are related to gamma ray bursts. It has been known for 30 years now. It's nothing new. But where and when the black hole is up? This is the novel. In other words, there is uh, an action certain in the form. Then uh, there are X ray, there are speed, there there are the effects of the matter around, which has been uh, beautifully presented by all guests, the accretion of the of the of the physical accretion on the moving star. Then uh, there is the formation of the black hole that all were shown. which is uh, unconventional, like every major physics we do are unconventional, because we just uh, understood the effect. There is an action of the black hole, not in the X-ray, not in the gamma, but in the jet. And there is where the black hole is seen. Therefore, this is the main novelty. Therefore, be attentive to this because we think we have finally identified the presence of the action of the black hole. Raim is uh, uh, completing his thesis and this will be part of his uh, final oral examination which he should do soon within the next week or one. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Fini, for a nice introduction. And thank you. So today I'm going to talk about jet emission and the inner engine of the GRBs. These are the outline of my talk, which I intend to talk till here before going to the, this uh, mathematical uh, description of the inner engine. I only talk about uh, JEV radiation, the satellite, how to detect them, what is the range of this JEV radiation, and what can explain this JEV radiation, what, what can be proposed to explain this JEV radiation. And then I will uh, introduce, I will introduce our fitting of the luminosity that can help us to recognize how this black hole that we think is the origin 
the origin of this jet radiation will spin down and lose the rotational energy and give emission to the jet radiation. And uh, we will I will show you that this is very essential and crucial to know what is exactly behind all this mechanism. Uh, I, I will finish here, but I will have a sm uh, summary about this part, that uh, how this um, jet radiation and how the black hole are related to each other using the ex black hole in a mag uniform magnetic field, external magnetic field. Okay, first I will show you what, the, I will give a summary of what we are going to talk about. Here I only go through the long GRVs. What are the long GRVs and their uh, relation to the jet radiation? Long GRVs, as yesterday when you mentioned, are the GRVs that 90% of their energy emits more than, in, in the light curve, more than two seconds. If it is this T90 is less than two seconds, we call it short GRV. And if it is more than two seconds, like this, like this or this, we call it long GRV. Today, I will focus on the long GRVs and the jet radiation. Okay. In our classification, I will go through the X-ray flash and binary driven hypernova, which we consider them as a long, as a long GRV subclassed with progenitor of carbon CO core, which undergo a, a supernova explosion. Mm -hmm. Uh, which in one of them, uh, neutron star doesn't go to the black hole, and in other one, in BDHN, neutron star collapse to the black hole. This is from our classification. Uh, and I will show that in BDHN, mm, uh, there are two types of the BDHN, one which is which exactly the hypercritical accretion to the black hole will create a newborn black hole. And another one, hypercritical accretion will accrete uh, of the supernova, of the hypernova will accrete to the black hole, uh, which has already been formed. Okay. After that, we will we'll do the, our assumption. We assume that jet emission originates from the rotational energy of the black hole. And consequently, we show that, as we expect from this assumption, that I will go through why we do this assumption. In XRF, using the observation, there is no jet radiation uh, reported. And in the BDHN, uh, jet radiation uh, is uh, reported, which confirm uh, our previous cl classification that jet radiation is related to the black hole formation or already black hole. Okay, then I will go through the BDHN and I will show that in uh, some of the BDHN black hole, uh, jet radiation cannot be observed, which again, I will explain why this, can, this observation cannot be, this cannot be seen in the black hole. And from this observation, uh, we will uh, we will I infer a new morphology of the black hole uh, B BDHN, which is very similar to the AGN. I will show the, the plot, and which shows that only jet emission occur within the cone of half opening angle along the orbital plane of the binary progenitor, about 60 degrees. Another thing that shows that. Uh, Jet radiation is different from the prompt or from the early afterglow is that our calculation of gamma uh, factor uh, in the transparency of the jet radiation is around uh, 1,500. This value for the prompt is like l around 500 and for the early afterglow is like two, three, which show that it has a different mechanism for producing the jet uh, radiation. 
Finally, I will show the uh, this universal power law behavior of the black, uh, of the gel radiation, which can estimate, uh, which can help us to estimate how the black hole rotation is uh, going down, how uh, the spin down rate of black hole uh, behave, uh, how is the behavior, which is very crucial to know what is the what is the inner engine of the black, uh, of the GRB which produces this gel radiation. Okay. The crucial point is that we need the observation. We need the observation. Without observation, we cannot uh, do anything. First, the earliest evidence for the uh, radiation of the GEF was the EGRET, which uh, launched by NASA. It, it has uh, this uh, energy band operator from 20 MeV to 30 GeV. Uh, and unfortunately, this uh, uh, GRBs that has been, have been observed by this satellite have no redshift. And when we don't have redshift, we cannot talk about our classification of the GRB. Because uh, for knowing what is the uh, what, what is the GRB subclass of uh, when we observe a GRB? We need to know at least like 100, 200 of information of the light curve uh, after the trigger and the redshift. Without redshift, we cannot talk about anything. So, Agile started in 2007 on board of the, uh, with on board uh, uh, Agile Grid. Agile Grid was on board on the Agile. Uh, it operates from 30 MeV to 50 G, uh, GV, GEV. And it observed uh, the first, uh, very, uh, the first uh, long GRB with redshift, which allow us to study, uh, the, which allow us to study the GEV radiation uh, and uh, know what is the energy of this. And later on, uh, Fermi LAT, Large Area Telescope, which is the, uh, which is the um, crucial part, uh, crucial point in our work. We use mostly from the Fermi LAT, which acts from 20 MeV to 300 GeV. Okay, so what can explain this GEV emission? In our opinion, as I say, we assume that rotating black hole is a good candidate. We will show you why this is a good candidate. Okay. So, first we assume that the GEV emission originates from the rotational energy of the black hole. In our classification, we had considered XRF. XRF, uh, in our classification, had energy less than 10 to 52. We considered them as uh, hypercritical accretion to the uh, neutron star. And since the uh, binary distance is uh, uh, around 10 to 11 centimeters, to, uh, it, they are very far away from each other. It cannot, neutron star cannot reach its critical mass and black hole will not form. So we went through the observation. We looked at our classification we found 48 XRF after launch of the Fermi. Then uh, seven only uh, observed by Fermi uh, from this 48 after the launch of the Fermi, uh, which uh, three inside the Bohr, uh, uh, three outside the Bohr side and four inside. And uh, we, uh, surprising, we saw that in none of them, Jeff emission is observed. So, it shows that when there is no black hole, no GEV emission is observed. These are the list of the, the XRFs, X-ray flashes, that you can see here Fermi doesn't have any observation, and here we have observation. In none of them, GEV is observed. Okay. The crucial point was BDHN. We have uh, like around 40, 400 BDHN after the launch of Fermi with known redshift. In our classification, BDHN has energy 10, more than 10 to 52, 
and in BDHN, in our classification, we can see that that black hole is formed. So, we observe that in 21 of these GRVs, 21 of this BDHN, GEV radiation is observed. So it indicates that the GEV radiation, whatever it is, it's related to the black hole formation or an already formed black hole. The book. No. Okay. Okay. Here, let me explain. Uh, you mean both side angle of the Fermi here? At the at the moment here we can see that. Uh, we consider this limit, the Borsite angle of Fermi, around 75 degree. It shows that the, at, at the moment of the, at the moment of the trigger, we consider the GRVs that at the moment of the trigger, Fermi is uh, looking at them, and the Borsite angle of the Fermi is like 75 degree. Fermi is looking at them, so we are not interested in the Fermi, uh, the uh, GRVs that Fermi left at the trigger time is not looking at them or is looking at uh, the degree more than 75 uh, uh, degree that uh, is directed to the location of the black hole. So the crucial point came here. Since we ca consider that the energy decay of GEV radiation can be explained by the black hole, we know that the whatever energy is in outside the black hole is the rotation of, uh, rotational energy of the black hole, plus, plus the electromagnetic part. But here, we consider that the electromagnetic uh, lambda, Q over M, is too small, and it doesn't uh, it contribute to the geometry. However, this is essential to explain the energy of GRB uh, energetically. Uh, here, when lambda is too small compared to alpha, so we neglect it. So only rotational energy, we can see the rotational energy of the black hole can explain the uh, J radiation. So we say that by demanding this extractable energy of the mm, black hole is equal to the energy of the GEV. We can find out what is the mass of the black hole and what is the rotational factor of the black hole here, since we neglect the lambda. This is the crucial point that we consider. But uh, uh, which for this mass, for this mass, we use the reducible mass formula of the uh, Cristodulo Ruffini, this part, which also, after like um, some months, uh, um, proposed by Hawking, but first uh, proposed by Cristodulo and Cristodulo Ruffini, after some months, the same mechanism uh, proposed by Hawking in like several months after this proposal. So, when you look at here, we have extractable energy. This extractable energy, when we, uh, we say it is equal to EGF, it is this equation is not enough in the same time to uh, define, determine the mass and alpha. So we need another equation. What, what can be a good equation since our since in our uh, GRB model, we say that we have the neutron star and we have the hypercritical accretion to the neutron star. The second one, we consider the critical, the moment, the moment that the neutron star, the moment that the neutron star collapses to the black hole 
and this critical mass of the neutron star uh, has been found by uh, Cipolletta, Cherubini, uh, uh, Jorge, and Professor Ruffini to follow this equation. So this equation give us by demanding that mass of the black hole is uh, equal or bigger than the critical mass of the neutron star can give us the second equation, which in the same time it is the function of, it, it gives us the function of mass and alpha relate to each other. So we have two equations, two variables. We can solve, we can solve the equation to find out what is the mass and spin of the black hole. So in the same time, when we solve this equation, uh, we have uh, like 16 BDHN, which have, uh, before going on, I will tell you that this one, in this case, the maximum alpha of the neutron star always is like 0 0.7. So in 16 of them, when we, uh, cal when we solve these two equations together, we get these values for different equation of state and always alpha is less than 0 0.7 and mass is very similar, it's very uh, near to the mass of the, uh, to the critical mass of the non-rotating black hole. So, uh, and for this one, since for each equation of state we have different mass of non-rotating black hole, these two mass are different. And later on, uh, the, which I'm not going to talk about this, but uh, uh, the study of the prompt emission using our, our model for inner engine of the black hole can rule out some of this, uh, maybe can rule out some of this uh, equation of state, which one is wrong, which one is right. Okay, so told, I told you that uh, the maximum value of alpha is 0 0.7 for the newly for the critical mass of the neutron star newly born black hole. In some of our, in some of our BDHN, which here in five of them, the, the when we uh, solve the equation, we find out that the maximum alpha is more than 0 0.7. So, for, uh, which is not possible in our equation. So we fix alpha to be uh, 0 0.7, then we find the mass of black hole, which is uh, much larger than the, much larger than, larger than the uh, critical mass of the neutron star, which uh, range from 0 0.5 to almost 30 solar masses. This here, this here hint, which will show us again that uh, this mm, hypercritical accretion cannot be on the, mm, cannot happen on the neutron star. And black hole before this has been already formed. So BDHN have two subclasses. BDHN type one, which is uh, mm, carbon CO core going to a neutron star, then black hole, or BDHN type two, carbon CO core uh, exploding at supernova and hypercritical accretion to the uh, already formed black hole. These are the list of five uh, BDHN type two that in the BDHN already, already black hole is there and is n it is not uh, no, the already black hole is there and it's not formed after the hypercritical accretion to the neutron star. So, as you can see, these values of alpha are different from one. Uh, we are currently working. Uh, the relation if this alpha equal to one can explain the prompt uh, we are currently working on this if it can explain the um, prompt emission phase which uh, which can explain uh, actually it can explain but still the physics behind is not so obvious for us 
So, uh, I told you that in 21 BDHN, we observed the, we observed the uh, GEV radiation. However, in 27 of them, we didn't observe the GEV radiation. Mm, in previous work, this 27, in this work uh, and this work that uh, just accepted in LPJ, we have considered, we have assumed this, these are the G, uh, BDHN we, that we can see from the plane. And for the 21 with the GEV emission are the one that we see from the, from the top. So this number can give us already, this number 21 over 21 plus 27, can give us the hint that what is the morphology of this uh, BDHN, which uh, it, this number tell us that the opening angle for the GEV radiation for the GEV radiation uh, part is like 60 degree, and you can see idealized here. So here we have opening angle of 60 degree, GEV radiation come out. Here is like the orbital plane, where GEV radiation cannot come out from this region. So if we see from, from this region, we cannot see the GEV radiation. If we see from the top, we can see the GEV radiation. Also, our uh, simulation, our simulation uh, shows that uh, similar, similar uh, morphology of this idealized morphology. So now it's time to go to see the luminosity, luminosity behavior of the GEV. Because this luminosity can give us uh, the information how the mass and the spin of the black hole can change. And it's very crucial to study luminosity instead of the, mm, mm, luminosity in the uh, rest frame instead of uh, study the behavior of this light curve in the mm, observer frame. So the problem is that all of this BDHN, 20 BDHN, in some of them we have only some data point that we cannot fit them, we cannot fit them uh, separately. So we consider for all of them the same power law, but the different amplitude. So we get this relation which give us the alpha, the power law index, almost 1.2, and different amplitude of the GRBs, and you can see for some GRB that we don't have enough data, like two data, this method, uh, two data point can help us to uh, define what is the power loss slope and what is the energy in this region. So let me press here, okay. So the, um, as I told you, it is very crucial luminosity to know what is the uh, how mass and spin of the black hole is changing. Considering this fact that the luminosity is the changing energy of extractable energy by time, plus irreducible mass, the mass energy formula of Chris Tudulu, uh, uh, Ruffini, we can find that how mass and how J, which uh, are changing by time, by integrating of this equation. So you can see that mass is a function of initial mass that we have already calculated from uh, uh, critical mass of the neutron star, and from fitting, we have A for each, from, for each uh, GRB. So we can find out how this mass uh, is changing. Plus, mass energy formula of the uh, Christodoulou Ruffini, we can find out how J is changing. So by knowing mass and J, uh, angular momentum, we can find how the spin parameter of the black hole is changing. These are the, uh, for, mm, for, uh, for GRB as an example, I have shown that here you can see the spin parameter is going down by time which shows that spin 
rotational energy of the black hole is paying for the jet radiation that uh, spin goes down and uh, pays for the jet rad the radiation in the jet uh, range. So I, I will stop here. I think sh uh, session will continue. But before uh, going on, I will tell you that this, this uh, relation that we have here, it's very crucial to find out what is the inner engine of the black hole, which uh, Shashen will continue. Now I'm going to give a very brief discussion of the electromagnetic field structure around the black hole. And which is fundamental that we have been studying for years and try to approach him to, to the Four killing vector in the fact space of translation translation invariance give identical give electromagnetic field which is identical zero. However, three killing vector associated with the location location SO3 allocation, three OR angle, let's put simple, is generate a constant magnitude. Another, we made three killing vector 
relate to the Lorentz boost, which generate constant electric field. Okay, this is an analogy in the fast space time. So this you can find all books. I just try to have brief discussion to to see to to, to find all these conceptual connections. Now, let's try to go to a physical relevant and simple case, which are stationary, axiosymmetric black hole. Okay, the candidate certainly is a pair of black hole. So before going there, I, I, I forget, before going there, I would like to stress another important point. We mentioned the, the electric magnetic field built up in the, by Gini vector satisfy the source is free Maxwell equation with this con condition. Okay, waiting solution or Einstein equation. So source is free, Einstein equation. We know from the causes, universal causes. Of course, again, we come back to flux space time. If the source is free Maxwell equation, without tr without no any boundary condition, the only give identical zero source solution. Means if I source is free Maxwell a mass, a source is free Maxwell equation, and I have no any no trivial boundary condition. Okay, then the solution only can be only zero. You cannot you cannot get something for nothing. So you got to have some no trivial boundary condition for source is free Maxwell equation. Okay, this second point I mentioned I forgot. Now let's simplify our this this general discussion into a stationary. Ultra symmetric cases, black hole here, with curved rotating black hole. And now, in these symmetric cases, the killing factor is relevant to uh, killing vector only two. One is t time killing vector, the other is rotating free around the uh, symmetric axis, axis killing vector, free. Okay, so then now we put this black hole into a Original uniform, this I will simplify uh, 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 cases which is physical value, marking figure strength T. The reason why we put this, I already mentioned, we cannot get something from nothing. Okay, we have sources free Maxwell equation. And you if you want to have some no trivial no trivial or physical relevant solution, you've got to pay something by boundary. Here is the of course it's again the model, or let's put it away. It's a toy model, but we are approaching to physics. Uh, put this rotating black hole in a uniform magnetic field, which is asymptotically go to a constant magnetic field. Okay, this magnetic field is aligned on the symmetric axis okay, of the rotating black hole. Okay, so we got, we have a sources free Maxwell equation. And in the background of the ultra symmetric black hole, this curved black hole, and we have a this boundary uniform magnetic field. Certainly, the assumption is, is this field doesn't disturb, doesn't change very much of space time of curved black hole. So in these cases, we by this uh, perpetual theory, we can have two killing vector. Sorry, I repeat it. One is a, rota a social rotating, the other time killing vector. And these two killing vector build up a gauge potential, A, which I, I haven't written it, one form. And its two form is corresponding to phys physical field strength, F. Just make D. Phi, eta is killing vector, D. You make D, so it's two form field, electric field. So then, now, we, this, this, uh, this equation actually is very, in, uh, very profound or very interesting. Right hand side, left hand side is electric magnetic field. Right hand side is space time. So if you try to relate, okay, here, sorry, the, here the P0 is extended magnetic field is written. J is the angular momentum of the this rotating black hole. So you can see what we are really interested in. P, of course, physical quantity, okay? We must mark this two form, okay? Then the other side, we have the magnetic field background, which is supposed to source it to produce something. And then also angular momentum. We have these two things, which is physical quantity. Not only 
if we think about this, I'm not going to discuss it in detail, and then I think mathematicians are much smarter than, than me to, to understand this thing. If we both die, you have a two dimension sphere topological integration. <coughs> the left hand side is Gaussian. Okay, right, it will relate to charge. Now. So, the right hand side, you will relate to the mass and angular, mom or angular momentum. Only two equations. Here I, uh, I written one is a, a poten state potential, the other is speed. So then now, this sphere, this sphere F, is written in coordinate. In this coordinate, the ball linguist coordinate, it is, it is expressed this way. Okay, this is the matrix. Okay. Then now we have we have field also have field the one uh, in the, in the form now we have each component of field okay which of course as we say everything comes from the field zero you need to have this boundary to have no three D field uh, <laughs> yes so from your previous intuition apparently the, the F is a is that form field form yeah uh, is that global or is that all I cannot. Pre I understand your question, but okay. I I haven't think about case for this. I think it should be the global. What is the situation? He he. Uh, he asked this. Uh, this uh, uh, Show me. Mm -hmm. You also this one, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, because this app is uh, apparently by that uh, following this intuition, app is uh, exact field form. I just wonder if this is locally exact or how it's, uh, it's globally. Okay, I, I, I need to think about this. Okay, I haven't thought about this. this I mean, this is, uh, I think it should be the global. Okay, I cannot understand you. Ah, I cannot answer you immediately. Okay, the all is component. And then what we are really into is this uh, 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 field, which is uh, uh, the, in the radio component, okay? And then we can, because once you have a field, a potential, you can introduce an uh, effective charge which represents this potential. Oh, I forgot one thing which I should say here, uh, too. There's uh, the other theorem to close this uh, transparency, which is this field means uh, rotating black hole in place in a uniform magnetic field, this field can be uniquely represented by by adding uh, a charge to the rotating black hole. This charge acts like a nino imaging charge. So as a result, this field in the magnetic field V0, this field can be uniquely represented by uh, K Newman black hole with a charge on it, and this charge is play the law of the Mino imaging charge. So with all this field potential, we are going to discuss, we are not we are we are going to understand how does this field do to produce some physical consequence that relate to observation. And before, before uh, going to this, let's just remind um, potential, gauge potential, gravitation potential, we cannot observe directly, or even kinetic energy, all this potential, we cannot observe this energy. Provide there's a charged particle is accelerating in this potential, or particle is accelerating in this potential, and then they later they produce photon, then we can see. Or there's a collision, heat the production, and we can see. We cannot have a direct observation effect on the potential. So then, so this is why we need to discuss what does this potential 
what does this potential can do to relate to observation? One thing is uh, the Rahim he just said, he just already present is this potential, this free and nobody did the quantitative number, this thing you can accelerate in charged particle and counting, possibly counting for jet emission to be stuck. Okay, so from the jet emission, we can, we can say this is a, a charged particle, proton for example, are highly accelerated to this, by this field around a black hole, this one. And the other is what I'm going to more, this has been discussed by Rahim, the other is, this is, is, is actually Rahim discussed, okay, the, the field, we are extracting charged particle into the high energy. Then it means this uh, charged particle take away the energy of the gate potential. And then we can see, uh, have an observation to see uh, this is come from the field around the black hole. Then the other one, the other one, so this what he must dis discuss, okay, total energy of X-ray by the uh, particle actually by this field around black hole can reach very high energy up to the 10 to the 20, 21 electron volt without any interaction and this possible counting for the high energy cosmic ray but if this particle is interacting and then it will give rise to GB radiation we discussed. Now I'm focused the other possibility, possible way to see how this potential can produce some phenomena that we are uh, trying to understand uh, by, by which is fundamental for understanding the, the, the inner engine of the black hole of the gamma ray burst. Okay, this one has been discussed. Okay, this is a, 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 a potential energy of the electric magnetic field of black hole actually near pro proton and how much time need to take to accelerate into how much energy. Now let's see okay so now as I already say that if there's no interacting we can reach very high energy. But if there's interacting with the charged particle with the collision with the biparticle or collision by field because syn synchrotron radiation, the maximum energy we can get it is a jet. This has been discussed and then also the Lorenzo factor. Now, now what I try to say Says, uh, what I try to discuss is another mechanism which we try to see the phenomena, the consequence of this electric, uh, strong electric field around the black hole. And suppose we don't have any material, any proton, for example, any material around the black hole. Before the mechanism to actually proton to very high energy and collision to the, to the other particle or, or, or reach to very high, high energy as a cosmic ray, we need to have some proton present in the electric magnetic field. But now, if we suppose there's no any matter around, it's vacuum around the black hole, we have another mechanism to dissipate this, to extract this electromagnetic energy, become a photon energy or uh, some dissipation energy which we can observe. And this was, this is so-called Euler Heisenberg mechanism, which in a very simple way to explain is in a vacuum, now there's no matter around in the vacuum. The vacuum is not exactly empty. There are many particles and antiparticles, for example, like electrons and positron are fluctuating. Okay, this black C, but it's fluctuating. So the fluctuating in the, in the space-time is about component length. 
and it comes in time. So it's very small, but they are fluctuating. But if it is uh, it's exactly it is there, no any external field, this fluctuation is random. Orientation. Random in or orientation. But if there is electric field present, classical electric field, this fluctuation will be guide will be oriented by along the field direction. So it means the po position will go this way while they're fluctuating, and then the electron go to the other way. So when the field is strong enough, they will separate from each other, okay, and then pr produce an uh, electron post-strong pair. And this is exactly what Ola Heisenberg tells us. And then the field so strong, how much strong is this field at least, needs to so strong to do the job to produce two electron, two electron mass, electron proton are the same mass. So at least you need to so strong to produce this, okay? But once it produces, okay, there's a, uh, there's a, this dynamic to produce, this electron proton will also be annihilated to the two photon. And because we know the electron proton is 1.5 uh, mass, so when they annihilate also two photons, I have energy in uh, one mass. So it means this phenomena is very high energetic. It means as, a, as order of the mass, okay? Also it's very quick because it's in common time. Also happen very local in the company labs. Provide if field, extended field from a black hole is so strong, can do the job to separate electron from the proton. So this is an, uh, the, the mechanism which, which in addition to accelerating proton to high energy, but this is another mechanism that the electric field can do to produce a consequence of the observation. So we can calculate this, and this, this is uh, this, uh, the, the production rate Okay, I have it right, right here, the production rate of this electron proton pair production is calculated by, by Ola Heisenberg in early in uh, 1930, and in 1950, the swing, uh, Swinger give a, a expression which is invariant, and this is important because if it's invariant, we can really <coughs> implement it in a closed space time, and to build a local Lorentz frame character, local Lorentz frame, because this phenomenon is rather local in a space and time, and to calculate this. And what does it mean ray is invariant? Invariant means this 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 production ray is this production ray is the function of F F and F F tilde. So this F F is just E squared minus B. This electrical mass of B. And F F tilde is E dot B. This two in invariant quantity determine the, the ray. And then the ray is also invariant. Okay, it's low in And then we can really apply, implement to make a local Lorentz frame to really calculate the quantity that how much E plus E minus B is produced. And this was the formula we Okay, this is a formula we have calculated where this pair is produced, in what range of this pair is produced, and what density of this pair is produced, this density. Okay? And this energy density. Because we just say how strong B is, how much energy you need to pay to produce one pair, at least one man. So this energy density, and this total energy. And this, this all this calculation, just because this is very local, very fast, and then production rate is invariant, in terms of two invariant quantity, two, only two invariant quantity. So, if we put the number in, we can see this uh, total energy is very large, as pointed out in early 
of the 70s by Tamu and Dufini, Professor Dufini and Tamu, is up to 10 to the 45 or 44 herbs. And this is, has been a, con is, is a, is a candidate to explain this gamma wave, uh, the huge energy of gamma wave. And we have been trying to study this with all this preparation to understand the engine of the gamma wafers. And all this discussion are very fundamental for this study. So I close my, okay, then this actually is a picture of the field, the field and the pale distribute around the Kerr Newman black hole. Okay, so the, 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 and then this is very high energetic and very dense because uh, a lot of pale E plus E minus is produced and then later the 94 form. So very dense and high uh, high energetic object. And this one will uh, very possibly the inner engine of the gamma ray burst and all it is relevant phenomena of jet radiation and, and, and x-ray radiation so on. So this is my lecture today. We are studying that, okay? Here I just present a very simple case, but this is fundamental to go on to any direction. We are, I, I cannot answer your questions. We are, we are studying this. So here we just say the curve black hole, we want to have a sort of see the potential field, okay, which is fundamental. In this simple case, a curve black hole in present of the magnetic field. Okay, I forgot to mention one thing. This is infinity, uh, this is uh, uniform magnetic field, okay? Okay, I'm not going to let the, the very complicated configuration of magnetic field you're talking about. It's a uniform configuration. It's, the, it's not only simple, also there's another condition. There's no magnetic multiple. Means how many magnetic field line go in, how many magnetic field go out. Okay, this is very simple cases. But how we have a, another equation. We really can know what's magnetic, the order of magnetic field and to see it's possible. And then after this is clarified, we may go to the situation you are. The difference will be is interesting this point because uh, in this case the, the you have the rotation of the black hole and magnetic field and you create an electric field mm -hmm. and so the energy is taken is being taken from the rotational energy of the black hole as in the case you are you are mentioning so the, the energy are. is taken from the binary from the from the from the binary energy. That would be a different, a different, so different inductor mechanism. Can you repeat? Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, it's just like uh, I can uh, uh, repeat again in this course. The, the, you have the two black holes rotating. Rotating. And, and, and in, in a magnetic field. In that case, you will create in also. In a magnetic field. In, in, in a given magnetic field. In a given. In that case, you will. Uh, may you, maybe you can emit something by taking energy from the binary from the binary energy. And well, so you, you will alter the, for example, the, the evolution as assume, assuming only by gravitational wave emission. Will be different, the evolution of the binary.
because the wrong solution is uh, assuming that there is uh, a, a pair matrix and uh, a magnetic field uh, relatively local. And uh, it's a first approximation solution. It's a perturbation solution. If uh, the magnetic, if the, and in our paper we, we verify uh, the, the validity of the approximation near near the black hole with this uniform magnetic field. And we just work in that region, near the black hole with this magnetic field. But if you take the solution of a magnetic field uh, and propagate it over the big distance, you end up in a different, in a Mendel solution, in which the, ma the, the set of the magnetic field as, uh, is extremely important. I mean, if you have a magnetic field, the, the, the set gravity of the magnetic field is particularly important. And that is a known solution, is the Mendel solution, uh, of, uh, which is magnetically dominated. But uh, the very delicate point of this uh, treatment is that we just look locally around the black hole with the magnetic field, uniform, assuming that there is a source due to the, to the binary. Uh, therefore, there is, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and a very important point is that uh, the, the, the V cost B generated by the pair black hole with this uniform field is equivalent to a charge, but there is no charge. This is the key point. It's what Wheeler likes very much, a charge without a charge. There Mino, is no Mino, charge. Mino, Mino, charge. Excuse me? Mino, Mino, charge. Mino, Mino, of a charge of black hole of a Kernium and black hole in many acts. And we look at the Dracon polarization. This one is a Kernium and black hole. And you look at the problem of Dracon polarization around the Kernium distribution. This is asymptotically flat. Here we have substitute the Kernium and black hole with, which has a charge to a a Kerr solution without charge plus a magnetic field. And around the, around the black hole, these two descriptions are equivalent. This is the fantastic thing. This is the crucial point. And then you can use all the solution of the charge that we do in this open case. But uh, the, the Uh, if you are interested, well, of course, what you are considering uh, 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 two black holes uh, in another magnetic field that is uh, even more grandiose. <laughs> but it's just the starting point. So the difficult point is the connection between uh, our previous work and this one without charge, but with charge, with care, a pure care with the magnetic field of background, uniform. And in a region local enough to have this approximation to be valid, we don't extrapolate to very big distance where it becomes magnetically dominated. Therefore, the physics that, uh, that await us on with the companion star uh, accretion, this uh, is the region of validity. You, you have to match to the companion star nearby. But this problem, we don't need to do that for the moment. It's certain we don't propagate to infinity, because otherwise uh, a magnetic field which goes to infinity is 
Ну, это вообще какие-то люди, да? Assuming a quantum black magnetic field uh, going through a black hole, and it is the direction of the magnetic field lines are in alignment with the spin of the black hole. Yes. I wonder um, if they are somehow misaligned. Is a way that the spin of the black hole will kind of interact with the magnetic field lines and. solution, the cat solution, everybody has been leaving out of the cat solution from since uh, 1967, what was the... 63, 63, no? Ah, 63, and this has been quite then there was the Kernium, which K plus an electromagnetic field. And this has been another miracle. It's not clear <coughs> who did the solution. Uh, there is a, a, a debate going on because Kern is the first solution. not clear who, who, who got that solution. And the cat thinks that he obtained the solution. Also, so no matter what, this is an exact solution, the Kernelman solution is this one. Now, the world solution is an extremely And then you write this equation and you obtain an exact solution for a uniform magnetic field. And you find an exact solution which, which corresponds to a K plus a, an electromagnetic field. Now, if you, uh, but, uh, but that solution is incredibly fortunate, that is the world solution. 
if you try to miss a line, nobody knows how to start and where to end. I mean, uh, try. Of course, it will be extremely interesting. But, uh, but it's uh, one of the most difficult problems in, uh, it will take maybe, uh, well, you cannot not know, but uh, maybe with computers it's possible to do miracles. But uh, it's a almost a null set. But if you have that solution, what we have shown is the way, is the way, if you have that solution of wall, is the way to create the Dijer solution, the Dijer, the Dijer emission. And, uh, and this is fantastic. I mean, out of that solution, we have the paper coming out. Is the just you can have a just solution? Mr. Dacobo, you agree? And this this is uh, 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 it's completely new. Of course, you can. There will be many other interesting physical process to look because certainly not to go too far to a magnetic predominance because that is not interesting. You always want to have a solution local, asymptotically flat, because otherwise, you know, for the, there is this work of Gibbons going to exploring uh, at large distance uh, with the universe that's uh, dominated by the magnetic field. I mean, it's a nightmare, but, but it's not physically interesting because we have here, we look at the, the jet emission coming in an asymptotically flat space. Therefore, no matter how complicated the problem is, it's not relevant because we are in an asymptotically flat space. But the key point is, although this is a subset of a very much more complicated problem, we get to the solution for the jet emission which you observe in gamma ray bursts. If, if you uh, if you depart from that solution by perturbation, maybe there will be jitter about the jet radiation of things of this form, which could be repassed. The one you are mentioning. There could be jitter to possible. But this is, uh, let us go on, that we have the solution, which is uh, leading. This, in other words, uh, uh, the key point, we are just looking at the leading term. Out of that leading term, get this, this study, perturbation, and check if this perturbation, out of this leading solution, can be looked, uh, checked with experiment. But uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's a fantastically more complicated solution than the than the current one. And it's the first time that we can extract rotational energy. Because before, out of the current human, you could not extract energy. This is the key point. Instead, K plus magnetic field, yes, you can extract energy. This is a turning point. We were looking for that since 40 years. In 40 years, we were there. Books written and so forth. Nobody found a way to take out energy. The, 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 um, look, look, all the, all, all the books in the lab, uh, uh, in the literature. This is the first book. Idealized, yes, but it works. Is the eternal problem how to extract rotational energy from a kernel human solution? The answer is it's possible to take out, but not from a kernel human, from a kern plus a magnetic field. This is the, the, the crucial point. And then you can extract the energy. I mean, you can see what, uh, uh, what has been shown by Rain that the well, we are working on this, but that the, that the rotational energy 
of the cash solution in this magnetic field diminished. Um, maybe the simple word to answer his question is the, the size of magnetic field is much larger than the size of physics we are discussing. Accelerating particle, okay, and the pair production means all this physical field we are using to make a particle accelerated and pair production. This all this we not discuss is much smaller than the size of magnetic field. So all of this discussed such a time is in say leading order is greater than at leading order. And we already understand the physics. But you, you don't have to extrapolate no. to large distance because otherwise you enter in a, in, a phys in a beautiful mathematical problem, but uh, not physically meaningful. And uh, this region can be quantified. So you spend so much time. But I think this is the. I mean, when we were looking for this one, for this one, we need to go to city. Water. work on Kevin Newman, this has been fantastic. And I agree with you, it's a very special case. But then you can study perturbation of this field and see, and see what happens. But if you point to the leading order, you can extract everything. So let's uh, keep a kind of thank Professor Buffini and all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you.